Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. In today's video, I'm going to give you six soundproofing strategies that you can mix and match when you're building a wall assembly to keep unwanted sound in the outside environment from making it inside your soundproof enclosure. If you have not seen part one of the series called What is Sound, go check it out. I posted it a few weeks ago and I delve into the science of sound because we have to understand what we're trying to stop before we can actually stop it. So go check that out now and then come back here and we'll pick it right up. We'll wait. All right, you back? Good. So now you know that sound is energy. It's a sound pressure wave that has compression and refraction and our ears pick it up as sound. Well, there's two ways that we can keep this sound from making it inside a space that we are wanting to soundproof. We can either reject the sound, we can either just not let the sound come in to the wall assembly at all, or we can convert that sound that does make it into the wall assembly, we can convert it at, into heat because I can't hear heat, I can feel heat, but I can't hear heat. So we wanna convert the sound waves from something that we can perceive as sound into either heat, or there's some other strategies that we'll talk about to where we can just lower the frequency of the sound that does pass through the wall low enough that our ears don't pick it up as well. So let's jump right into it. Here are six strategies that we can use while we're making a wall assembly to keep sound from coming into a space. We can give ourselves space. Now that on the simplest terms means that you can move. If you don't like the sound of something, go somewhere else because sound loses its intensity by something called the inverse square law. That means that the further away from a source that you get, because sound is radiating in three dimensions, the further away you get, that power has to get spread out over a lot bigger area, and that area is the square of the distance that you are away. So it's exponentially quieter as you move away from a source. So if you move far enough away, you're not gonna be able to hear it at all because your sound is so dissipated because it's covering such a large area, and it takes a lot of energy to bump molecules into other molecules into other molecules and your energy gets dissipated as heat. So adding space makes it to where you cannot hear a source far enough away. So if you don't like what your neighbor's doing, move, problem solved. I know that's not why you're watching this video and it doesn't really <laughs> apply to you if you're like, well, that doesn't do me any good. I can't just move every time I have a sound that I don't like. But you can use space inside a wall assembly to give yourself more sound attenuation. Having a bigger cavity will give you more volume in there to burn up the sound as heat before it hits the other side of the assembly and comes through. So space. Second one is block. This is one of my favorite and probably the most underutilized portion or the most gotten wrong, I guess, would be a way of saying it, in building. People just don't seal up their enclosures to keep sound from coming in. Sound, has, sound is a wave and it has a property called diffraction. So if you've got a solid wall, even if this wall is completely soundproof, if you've got a solid wall and it's got a little bitty tiny hole in it, you will be amazed at how much sound comes through that little bitty hole. Do this someday. If you've got a really good door that seals, crack it, just open it and crack it just a little bit if you're on the highway. Crack it, open it a little bit and listen to those car noises that go by and then shut it and it just, Boom, the whole sound level. I mean, you audibly just hear it drop. Well, the reality is, unless you have a really good door, that door is doing a lot when you go from a small little crack to close and you hear that kind of attenuation that you get. Well, you can have the same effect again if you completely seal up that door. Doors, windows, any kind of penetrations in the home or in the room that allow the sound to flank around the wall assembly. So if you've got a perfectly soundproof wall, and you've got some bad detailing, well, you're still gonna have a lot of sound leakage in because it just flanks around it, it goes around it. So blocking, get the details right, caulk, seal, do everything that you can to make sure that all of your penetrations are completely sealed. The next one is mass, and this is the one that I see a lot of people know intuitively. I mean, you've all stood on the other side of a granite cliff and you can't hear anything that's happening on the other side of the mountain because it's a freaking mountain, right? It's, you're not going, short of an earthquake, you're not going to get that mountain to move. So people are like, yeah, mass, we'll just build a big concrete wall. Well, 
That's true. A big concrete wall works great if you're building professional movie theaters and you really want to get all the sound to stop from transmitting from one side to the other, then maybe a concrete big massive wall is going to be a good solution. Be aware though that just because something is heavy doesn't mean that it's going to stop all sound. Everything vibrates at its resonant frequency. So depending on the mass and the density and a bunch of other factors of a material, it's going to vibrate at a certain frequency. And we think, well, you know, if I do a four inch concrete wall, ain't no way sound is going to make that thing start vibrating. Remember the bridge that fell in Washington because the wind was blowing and it started vibrating at its resonant frequency and it tore this whole suspension bridge down? Yeah, resonant frequencies can build up and start moving a wall to where it's moving like a tuning fork. And if it's vibrating like a tuning fork at a frequency that you can hear, it's going to be very bad from a soundproofing standpoint. But if you get the mass large enough to where it's vibrating at its resonant frequency and that frequency is slow enough that it's below our human ability to hear, then you're okay again. But just don't think that throwing on a couple more pieces of gypsum board on either side of the wall is like, well, we added some mass and that's gonna sound it. <laughs> you know, you're gonna be very disappointed and you're gonna be start spending a lot more money just trying to add mass than if you employ some of these other strategies. So mass is good, you need mass, but don't just rely on it unless you're really invested in making a big, heavy, thick concrete wall. Absorption, that is the next strategy here. Now, absorption and damping are a little bit confusing and they do sort of the same things, but the way that I split them up, and if there's any acousticians out there or people who really know their acoustics, let me know if I've got this right. Absorption is when you're burning up energy just by the friction of air molecules against air molecules. So if I have sound coming in through my gypsum and it hits a pink fluffy cavity on the inside, the air will try to bump against other air, but it's all separated in all of these little cavity pockets and it's really inefficient to get the other stuff to start vibrating and it just, it just peters out. Friction against air to air and friction against air to fiberglass just burns it up and converts it to heat. So absorption is when we, when we convert the sound to heat through friction in the air medium itself. The fifth strategy is decoupling. So if I have a sound source vibrating one side of the wall, it's going to vibrate the other side of the wall if I have them tied together rigidly with a stud. But if I separate the two sides, if I make a split wall to where I have studs and gypsum and then no contact and an offset stud and more gypsum like I've drawn here, when this side of the wall starts to vibrate, this stud vibrates, but because it's not touching the other side of the wall, it doesn't immediately make it vibrate. It's got to re-excite the air inside the cavity, and then that has to re-excite the air on the other side of the cavity and transmit it through. And because of a lot of different reasons, but one of them being impedance mismatch, it's not, air is not very efficient at shaking things that are solid. So going from a gas to a solid, you lose a lot of energy and you reject a lot of that sound. So this sound, even if this side starts vibrating, the sound comes into this cavity, but it's really hard for it to excite the other side again, so it bounces around between the cavity and it burns up, especially if you put some of this absorbing material in between the two, now you're really burning up that energy. You're trapping it in there. It gets into one side of the wall, you trap it in there and you burn it up and you absorb that energy. Finally, the last strategy is damping. D-A-M-P, damp, not dampen, not dampening. I catch myself saying it wrong all the time. It's, I catch myself saying a lot of stuff wrong that y'all all comment below, still and seal and all my other Texasism. So dampening is not a word, it's damping, D-A-M-P. Um, so it, this is, damping is sort of like absorbing. You're still burning the energy up as heat, but you're doing it in a slightly different way. Instead of just burning it up from friction amongst the air molecules like you do with absorbing, you are burning up the energy through mechanical um, mechanical motion and friction between solid materials. So in this example that I've shown here, I've got two pieces of gypsum, I've got a layer of green glue between them, I've got a resilient channel, and I've got the stud. So 
The way that green glue works, and if you Google soundproofing, you're going to see green glue around everywhere, is this, when we excite this first piece of gypsum, when we put a sound wave in it, it's actually going to be vibrating like a wave. I mean, if you could see small enough, you'd see these, these atoms are moving back and forth, and this wave of energy is moving down the gypsum board, making it do this. Well, if I put another piece of gypsum right behind it, well, now I've got two pieces of gypsum that are doing the wave together. If I don't have anything holding those together, they're going to be able to do their wave and slide back and forth between each other with a little bit of resistance, but not, not a great deal. It's able to slide and, and you're able to transmit the energy from this one to this one and back to the stud. What green glue does is it's an elastopolymer, so it's going to separate the gypsum from the gypsum and it's going to allow them to move a little bit, but it's going to take a lot of energy in order for it to move. So as these two pieces of gypsum are sliding along each other, shearing this green glue interface, the green glue is going to convert that mechanical energy into heat and it's going to dissipate the sound as heat. So it takes a lot of energy for this piece of gypsum to pass the energy to this piece of gypsum because they have to go through this shearing of the elastopolymer and it's just too much work. We're just going to burn it up as heat and the sound goes away. So you got to keep a lot of things in mind when you are building an assembly to make sure that you're using all of the strategies available to you correctly. Starting with number one, blocking. I don't care how good of a soundproof wall you've put up, if the sound has a way of coming around it, it's going to and you're going to be very disappointed with the results. But we'll jump into all of the how-to's, different wall assemblies and how good they are at rejecting sound in the next video where we talk about STCs and OITCs. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below if you have any questions, if you've got any favorite soundproofing wall assemblies that you've been using, any other tips and tricks that you have. Subscribe if we've earned it. Like the video. Go follow us over on our social media pages. We've got Instagram at Jordan Smith Builds. We've also got an Instagram Smith House Co. We've got a Facebook Smith House Co. We've got um, a website coming up here sometime. I don't know. It's hard to do all of this all at one time. But go check all of that stuff out. We're doing what we're doing day to day over there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Smith House.